Yes, so look, I get my background has been in the meat industry for quite a number of years and more latterly, or when I say latterly, in the past since probably 1997 involved in farm assurance, different farm assurance programs over a range of industries. So my current role is business development manager for Assure Quality um, across the total business. Um, but I always kind of uh, gravitate back to the farming area, especially in um, you know, meat and fiber, I guess. So um, been involved with the NZ FAT program, I guess, from the early days, starting in the Remit Profit Partnership and coming through, I guess, to um, Assure Quality's current role in um, the, as being the certification body for NZ FAP. So I guess we're boringly known as a conformity assessment body or a CAB. Um, and we um, get accredited by JZANS, which is the joint accreditation system of um, New Zealand and Australia. This entity was put together by the New Zealand and Australian governments to monitor um, cabs like Assure Quality, and there's probably at least 100 across Australasia um, cabs across different industries. And um, I guess they also manage the standards, so I guess internationally recognised standards of which um, ISO 17065 is one of those, and that's the standard that NZFAP is accredited to, so it's an ISO 17065 standard. So um, we're the um, conformity assessment body um, for NZFAI and NZFAP. Um, we get audited by JZANS, they come along to assure quality once a year. If, if um, we've never had to drop down to less than a year, but they come along once a year and they spend about a week auditing Assure Quality systems, not just for NZFAP, there's probably seven or eight other uh, certification programs that we run on behalf of other, of other bodies and some of our own. So, and they spend about probably a day and a half to two days auditing us specifically just on farm assurance and there'd be a day on NZFAP. So they kind of do drill down into things. So I guess um, our role is, I guess, providing that certification for farms and farmers, and I guess helping or making that market access possible or certainly contributing to it. It's all about, uh, I guess, trust in us as a as an organisation that we're going to um, do the job with integrity and um, accuracy, I guess. So just a few NZFAP audit insights. Uh, Megan's already touched on a few of these. We've got about 50 auditors involved in red meat and fibre um, and wider meat, which would be turkeys and chickens and a few other areas like that. So we've got about 50 uh, auditors. In terms of NZ fat, we run along just under 100%, which is um, which is a good place to be. And we'd probably like to work a little bit ahead, actually, um, to get ahead of the game. As Megan said, there's probably over just over 8,000 certified farmers at the moment. Um, and so far on the program, we've done about 8,520 8, audits um, since we started just over th about three years ago. So there's probably been 500 audits, 500 farms that have come up for re-audit as their second run through on NZFAP. Uh, uh, Megan mentioned the 37% efficiency gain, and that's just the number of assurance programs that were out there and the number of farmers that obviously supply many or more uh, more than one meat company has been the basis of their efficiency gain. So um, I just thought I'd just touch on how we manage the onboarding process and what that means as far as farmers' data especially. So uh, we've had eight, over 8,000 farmers uh, complete the NZFAP application form that comes through to us. And it's obviously critical that, that we match them up with the right 
meat company or supplier company, if I think wider in terms of a wool company, so that it's only those supplier companies that the farmer is specified can um, view that farmer's information. So these relationships, I guess, support the NZFAP structure um, and sort of manage the permissions as far as viewing farmer information. So we've had 8,000, just over 8,000 farmers joining the scheme and they're sending in their application forms nominating their member companies. Um, we validate those, so it does take a little bit of time to actually validate that um, who that farmer is and also um, check with the meat companies that they have that farmer already on their books for farm assurance. Um, if yes, we, you know, we, had, we um, manage that in the database and if no, we'll contact that supplier company for each farmer that they may not have on their system and they confirm or deny, it's quite a strong word, that relationship. So if a farmer is an existing NZFAP member and they want to add a, a new company relationship, as we call it, um, you know, the farmer would need to um, talk to that agent for that company and then submit a change form. So that happens frequently, I guess. As far as how the program runs and the sort of most common non-conformances or issues that we would have, most of them are revolve around sort of chemical and animal remedy storage and documentation. So as you can see there, um, storage of agri uh, agrochemicals and products, uh, animal remedies, same again, how they are uh, recorded, stored and disposed of, um, the application of agrochemicals and fertilizer products and the preventative health plan. And then there's probably just down below that is also animal remedy treatments. So I'll just briefly die, I won't go into all of the detail of these, but if I look at those top four or so uh, non-conformances that happen uh, um, and are the most regular, um, is the agrochemical register and the uh, fertilizer storage. You can see the standard there and the requirements. So uh, what the requirements say, so a requirement is um, a must so that you know there is no sort of wriggle room in terms of requirements there will be for some of the standards you'll you'll see that um, you know there will be some recommendations so just to touch on I think um, Megan touched on it as well that you can go to the nzfat.com website and you'll be able to um, down the bottom of that page you'll look at resources and there'll be the standard and handbook the electronic version the latest version which is version 3 so in the requirements part section, um, it requires all of the agrochemical products have got to be recorded on the inventory. That's pretty straightforward. And I think most, when I say most farms, it's the most prevalent dog conformance, so not all, obviously. Um, agrochemicals and pasture crop treatments must be stored in a locked facility, which meets the requirements of the HSNO regulations and must be stored away from sunlight as recommended on the label. So these are, are base things, but obviously there's a human and animal welfare kind of, um, and food safety sort of um, components of this. If any of the agrochemicals have been decanted, um, product name and expiry date must be transferred from the original uh, label and fertilizer storage there again, has got to be constructed to maintain the regulatory standards, prevent leachate, et cetera. And the, one of the, I guess, more common uh, scenarios that we would have is that expired agrochemicals um, and not limited to animal remedies and veterinary medicines must be disposed of. And how you can do that is in uh, the NZ Fat Farmer Handbook. Just talking about the an animal, animal, animal uh, remedy inventory and storage. Similar scenario, but this is about um, all animal remedy products being recorded, same as the chemicals, um, what you should record down when you're making those records. So those, there are templates available from NZFAI. Um, and there's also probably many other 
areas where you would get templates from individual supply companies, from entities such as Cloud Farming, and Gretchen will talk to you about those a little bit later on, but there's a, there's a bunch of others as well, um, Farm IQ and Resolution and others that have some great tools for recording these kind of details. Um, I won't go into all of those. Um, and then and the, as far as storage goes, they need to be stored separately to farm chem chemicals and um, secure and stored away from sunlight. Now, what people tend to do is, um, what you're allowed to do uh, is you can store them in the same room or any, even in the same storage as long as the animal remedies are above um, the agrochemicals, et cetera, so that there's no um, animal welfare um, kind of issue that, that might crop up with that. And when we talk about um, you know locked and secure facilities, you know that could be in a larger room. So if it was in a shearing shed or some kind of other tool shed, and that whole shed is locked away um, all of the time, then that would that would meet the requirements. And obviously, a lot of people have them stored away in containers or in like much smaller um, cabinets, those kinds of things. And as, as I said before, the standard says that they must be secure, locked. The main reason is is pretty obvious from um, an animal, uh, yeah, animal welfare. You don't want animals getting in there and getting into that stuff. But also, of course, um, children or or anyone else uh, for that matter. So it is a food safety problem. Um, should you have unused, expired? Uh, remedies, then they've got to be disposed of appropriately. And a note at the bottom there, a veterinarian's letter is not acceptable to extend, somehow extend the shelf life of um, expired remedies. Although I know for myself, the same rules don't apply for some of the um, treatments that I might have in my medical cabinet, but that's the rules as far as NZFAP goes. Um, and just touching on briefly on a couple of others, that. Um, Agrochemical and fertilizer applications. Um, all all agrochemical and fertilizer applications to be grazed by livestock must be recorded by paddock and uh, or an, uh, some other land identification system. And there's some good ones out there again, as I mentioned earlier. Got to record those similar details to the um, animal remedies, um, date, location of the application. Um, the product, application rates, withholding period, etc. Um, so that list, probably everyone's reasonably familiar with those, but as I said before, there's some good templates out there um, available. You've only got to talk to your livestock rep or um, people like Gretchen who would help you out. And um, disposal of containers, you know, um, you've got to des describe the method used when disposing of those um, containers and or unused expired product. So there's obviously um, Egg recovery has been around for quite some time and does a good job. Um, and there's also other ways um, plastic for some materials. And the animal health, um, just that that sort of trips people up is um, having a documented preventative, preventative animal health plan. So um, that's got to be prepared annually. You'll have um, and includes to covers dogs also. Um, there, I mean. Um, Vets actually help farmers with a lot of these and or farmers do themselves and do a good job of it. Post-mortem and disease defect reports provided by meat processors um, must be reviewed to identify any issues and to inform um, the preventive animal health plan. And that that's kind of a reasonably simple sort of process to go through. I'm sure farmers do that anyway. Um, the plan's got to be implemented. So just having a, something nice on a piece of paper sitting up on a shelf is probably not not good enough. We'd be looking for evidence that you're actually using it and uh, impl implementing it and you'll have some records somewhere. Um, signs of ill health or injury um, obviously needs to uh, result in some uh, a timely appropriate preventative or re remedial action. 
over-the-counter um, animal remedies shall only be used in accordance with the registration conditions for that manufacturer's instru instructions and or um, written professional advice. Restricted medicines um, shall only be used um, obtained from a New Zealand registered veterinarian and based on the basis of an annual consultation that happens quite regularly, obviously. And any of the specific requirements um, that for such as deer velveting. Um, so that's probably as far as those details go. So I've only got another couple of slides actually. Just talking about the audit process, how we sort of it's it's operated quite well on the in the past. We do a lot of audit preparation. Obviously, you get it, farmers get a few phone calls from us trying to from our auditors trying to arrange um, audit appointments. Um, it's never easy, or if it's often not that easy. We try and schedule these so that uh, we can be as efficient as possible um, with travel and time, kilometres, etc., which um, can be challenging. Uh, one would say. Um, the on-farm audit time at the moment we run along about um, between 2.5 and 3 hours in audit and it's something that we would like to reduce um, and it, as, as would NZFAI. Non-conformance closure, we have thousands of these, um, probably um, I'm just trying to think in the last there'd be probably way uh, between nearly 5,000 non-conformances in the last 12 months. So actually managing those and actually communicating with farmers to get the evidence to close off those non-conformances is a challenge. And I think that's also where um, good documented systems work well and digital systems work even better. Um, obviously emailing the auditor and assure quality some of that close out kind of evidence. I'm assuming that some of those um, some of those are sort of a fairly high level, but some are also fairly low level non non compliance. Yeah, there's a there there is a lot of uh, what we call minors. So like minor minor non conformance is um, is something that um, is not going to put animal welfare or food safety health health and safety at risk. Um, so that's a minor. It's got 30 days to close it out. A major you. Um, you may have seen some of these on your audit results, hopefully not too many, but that's um, something that could put the process at risk, whether it be food safety, animal welfare, um, human health and safety. Um, and then there's 10 days to close those out. And then um, with critical non-conformances, that's um, something that's definitely has an immediate effect on animal welfare or food safety, health and safety. And so um, there's a 24 hour non-conformance closure period on that. And with majors and minors, oh, all of those, there is an escalation process, but at the end of it, they get to where a critical um, occurs and that farmer would be suspended the certification would be suspended until those non-conformances have been sorted. So there's quite a bit of admin and support goes on uh, to make all this work. Um, we're a fully digital across the whole process. Um, now it's about um, fine tuning and look, looking for other efficiencies and improvements, which just on that on the slide you can see there, um, we're looking to improve our process on how we currently do it right now. Um, we've done some pilot farms and we're looking to go out to more and more farms. So we're having a regionalized scheduling and farmer contact process. So well ahead of time, I think it's two months, there would be a coordinator would ring up and talk to the farmer. And that's all about um, audit preparation and farmer awareness of what might be needed or if they may need some help. We'd send out a email out a digital self-assessment form aiming to reduce, I guess the one of the aims of that is to try to have less hassle on the day of the order and that um, trying to reduce that anxiety level. I mean, we did do a survey of farmers and one of the main things that came through was 
various levels of anxiety that that um, auditors were coming and auditor was coming to their property. I know a number of farmers have had many audits and, and are probably um, quite au fait with the process, but there's also a lot of newer farmers that um, may not be. So our aim is to improve, I guess, farmer support and preparedness. Um, our, the second direct contact that the farmer would have would be from our auditor, and this would normally happen anyway. So that will continue. A big push for us is to try and improve our efficiency, especially around travel distance and time. Um, we are spending, um, I think it's about 140 Ks on average per audit. Um, so if you relate that to travel time, you know that's nearly an hour and a half per audit. So we, we wanna try and reduce that by, by 50% is our aim. Um, so where we end up, um, I guess we'll just keep looking for improvements, but it's from a cost and efficiency perspective, an area of focus for us as, as is trying to manage the non-conformance clo uh, closure process better. And obviously we wanna do that more digitally um, to make it easier for everyone. And I guess that's where um, there again, um, entities such as Cloud Pharma and others um, quite handy in that regard. So we wanna reduce the on-farm time as well so that when we are on farm, we'd rather be going out and doing like a reality check um, as opposed to spending an hour and a half sitting at the kitchen table, really trying to, um, as was mentioned in our earlier um, Zoom session, um, there's nothing wrong with sitting at the table for an hour and a half, um, good scones, et cetera, but um, that can be frustrating for farmers as much as anyone um, having to spend that, sort of amount of time trying to round up uh, records and that kind of thing. And obviously, as a result of this pro uh, of that process, we'd have much uh, smarter digital reporting. This is the last slide, so I think roughly running to time. So how can farmers best prepare for an order? And I guess that's our key focus of NZFAI um, and ourselves. Is it possible keep digital records and update them regularly? Now look, this um, I've been on um, many farms where their record keeping is meticulous, um, and it, it'll be on a diary, it'll be on a spreadsheet, um, um, on a ledger. There, I mean, there are so many ways, and they're very effective. So, which is good, and um, that can be reasonably efficient. But obviously, moving to a digital process will will help further. Make sure you've got a copy of the current. NZFAT standard, and we're saying digital is okay. So if you don't happen to have a latest version, um, which is version three before um, an auditor comes, you just need to know where to access it. You need to know, go on nzfat.com. Um, you need to be able to pull it up and be familiar with it without being able to recite it word for word. So, um, you know, that's very important. Without any of that knowledge, we can't really conduct an audit. Check your facilities and ramps, your animal remedies and chemical storage, which is near the top of the list. Check your dog kennels, which is actually, um, it doesn't show up on that top five, but it's right up there in terms of um, some of the issues that we have with um, dog kennels. And also just things like training records of staff. Um, yeah, some, record that staff have been trained, inducted and trained. And I guess that's, you know, a base um, health and safety and well-being kind of process as well. Um, we encourage you when you get an email from us, complete the self-assessment form when we send it to you. And um, obviously this will allow us to um, preview your records before you know we turn up on farm, so it kind of makes sense. Um, as we said before, it's not compulsory, but we will help you with that. So it's just all about there's some questions there. Take it. You may have some records from something like Cloud Farmer or Farm IQ. You would attach them, um, or I guess we would we would like to get to a stage where some of those entities entities send us that information when an audit's due directly. So. Um, that would make it a pretty seamless process from the farmer perspective when um, the tool, the digital tools that they're using 
pretty much do that for them. So um, that's certainly an area um, we want to go to. So I guess at the very end of it, what what I'm really what we want to achieve is when we do go on farm, it's more of a reality check, and we're actually adding a bit more value than you know trying to search you know search for documents and and records. So um, yeah, so that's that's a short quality and in a nutshell, kind of what we do. Okay, cool. Thanks, Pat. That gives a, a bit of rundown and, and it gives um, some suggestions there um, in terms of some of the things that uh, would make, I guess, their life easier and which, I guess, makes the farmer's life easier, especially when you hear about some people think that, it, you know, it is quite stressful having an audit. Well, you want to try and make it as easy as possible.